Hello everybody. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the channel. My name is Cherie and I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, uh, I would appreciate it if you would like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if that's something you're led to do. And um, it's getting to be a little bit sunny outside today. I don't use a camera light or anything. I just use daylight. So uh, anyway, I hope you can see this okay. I hope it's bright enough for you. Uh, today, uh, I thought I would go over one of the things that was in my Charles Stanley devotional this week. It's not today's reading. This is from the 15th of May, and uh, it's called The Gift of the Holy Spirit. And I thought that that was a really good one, and I wanted to share it with you all. I didn't get to do it on the 15th, but I don't guess it matters what day, as long as we get something out of it, I guess. Um, but anyway, it's from Acts 2, 22 through 39. And those verses say, Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that God did among you through him, just as you yourselves know. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by death. For David says to him, I saw the Lord ever before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. And it goes on to say, I washy tape this in my Bible, so let me get. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope because you will not abandon me in Hades, or hell, or allow your Holy One to see decay. You have revealed the paths of life to me. You will fill me with gladness in your presence. Brothers and sisters, I can confidently speak to you about the patriarch David. He is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah. He was not abandoned in Hades, and his flesh did not experience decay. God has raised this Jesus. We are all witnesses of this. And, uh, let's see, it still goes on. I'm sorry. We are all witnesses of this. Therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, he has poured out what you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into he the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord declared to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know with certainty that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And it goes on to say, With many other words he testified and strongly urged them, saying, Be saved from this corrupt generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added to them. Cool. Now, the... Uh, I just washi taped this in my Bible. I'll show you what I did. I do that sometimes when these really hit me. I uh, I washi tape them, which is this tape that you use. It's like a little masking tape. I tape it into the page in my Bible that it goes with the verses that it goes with. Because I thought, you know, one day I might be, uh, here's one of the cards one of my little buddies uh, drew and uh, colored me in there. Um. Anyway, I like to keep it because if someone's ever preaching on this, I can refer back to this even and get even more out of it. Because I'm sure I'll forget about it because my memory retention isn't very good. <laughs> now, the devotional 
says there's some confusion in the church today concerning the Holy Spirit. A number of Christians think the indwelling of the Spirit occurs sometime after salvation. But the scripture teaches that he comes to permanently live within a new believer the moment he or she places faith in Jesus. We don't need to pray specific words for the Spirit to arrive, nor do we have to attend a special service invoking his presence in order for him to dwell in us. Any teaching that claims we can lose the Spirit and must regain him over and over again is false. As soon as we trust in Jesus, his Spirit comes to abide with us forever. You can find that in John fourteen sixteen. This truth is essential to understand because Scripture clearly says that anyone who doesn't have the Spirit does not belong to Christ. That's Romans 8, 9. It would be impossible to live the Christian life without the indwelling Spirit. He's the one who guides us into God's will, teaches us the truths of Scripture, transforms us into Christ-likeness, and empowers us to serve and obey God successfully and joyfully. When you fully understand this fundamental truth, you realize that instead of trying to get the Spirit, you need to live like the Spirit-filled Christian that you are. So we have God's Holy Spirit in us. We just need to use it and uh, rely on it. Uh, you know, realize that the Holy Spirit is in us. But I thought that was a good devotional, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you all. I hope you thought it was interesting, too. <clears throat> but anyway, I hope you all are doing good. i uh, not been doing much. We're getting ready to start camping again, so I'll be hit and miss as usual. But I'll try to do the best I can to get on here for you. But uh, I had out-of-town company for a couple weeks, and we had a good time. And uh, it's just one thing after another, just trying to have time to do everything. But anyway, um, I've been doing most of my devotionals. I can show you some of my pages I've been doing this month. I've been doing it, I think I showed you these the other day, perhaps. But I'll show them to you in case you didn't see. This is just a scripture writing plan that I've been doing. Uh, I... Let me take that back. It's not a scripture writing plan. I'm doing things out of one of my devotionals this month, too, and that's what this is. And uh, I'm doing it out of this devotional, 365 Days of Kindness. So if that interests you, that's the uh, that's the Devo that I'm using. You can't miss it. There's the numbers for it. But anyway, um, I just wanted to ch touch base with you and let you know what was going on. And uh, that's just what I've been doing. That's the ones I've done so far for this week. But anyway, I hope you all are having a great day and a great week. And I hope to be back here with you really soon. I hope it won't be as long as it has been in between videos. But you never know. That's why I don't like to say or promise because you never know what each day brings. You know how that goes. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And I'll see you back here real soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.